Welcome to this time of worship with Club United Methodist Church. This is how we worship these days, online and on time. To the God who created, let us sing praises. To the Son who revealed the infinite, let us bring open minds. And to the Spirit who makes all things new, let us lift our souls in worship. Amen? And join us as we sing our opening song, God of Wonders, led by the praise team. separated the waters under the dome 
from the water above the dome. And it happened in that way. God named the dome the sky. There was evening and there was morning, the second day. God said, but the waters under the sky come together in one place so that the dry land can appear. And that's what happened. God named the dry land earth, and he named the gathered waters seas. God saw how good it was. God said, let the earth grow plant life, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind throughout the earth. And that's what happened. The earth produced plant, plant life, plants yielding seeds, each according to its kind, and trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. There was evening and there was morning, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the skies to separate the day from the night. They will mark events, sacred seasons, days, and years. They will be lights in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth. And that's what happened. God made the stars and two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day and the smaller light to rule over the night. God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. There was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. God said, Let the waters swarm with living things, and let birds fly above the earth, up in the dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals, and all the tiny little living things that swarm in the waters, each according to its kind, and all the winged birds, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. Then God blessed them. Be fertile and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. God said, Let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, and wildlife. And that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the seas, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every crawling thing on the ground. Then God said, I now give you to all the plants on the earth that yield seeds, and all the trees whose, whose fruit produces its seeds within. Th these will be your food. To all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green, green grasses for food. And that's what happened. God saw everything he had made. It was supremely good. There was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. The heavens and the earth and all who live in them were completed. On the sixth day, God completed all the work that he had done. And on the seventh day, God rested from all the work that he had done. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all the work of creation. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. May the same word that created all things bear fruit in our lives, in the community of faith, and in the world. The word of God for the people of God. Yes. Thanks be yes. to God. And now join our praise team, and this is a song that you're familiar with, and you're home. So jump up and down, wave your arms, sing out, uh, have fun with this.
had said that the sermon series is that we will be preaching out of Genesis for, from now until the, the middle of August, uh, and then we will be preaching out of Exodus. So we're going to be telling the great stories of the Old Testament. So we entitled this series, I Love to Tell the Story. So we hope that you will continue to worship with us as uh, why we do this uh, series. And so my sermon this morning is about being created in God's image. But I want us to talk about blood type for a minute. I'm a positive. I don't know, is there anyone else out here that's a positive? Okay, I see a couple people. Now here's the thing. My blood is A positive. If I donate my A positive blood to the American Red Cross and someone else donates their A positive blood to the American Red Cross, that A positive blood is compatible and can go into the body of anyone else that has A positive blood. It does not matter that it came from an African American woman, a woman of European descent, a man of Asian descent. It does not matter because the blood is the is the light blood, and we've been created in God's image, and we have all been given blood. Now some are A, some are B, some are O, some are A negative, right? There's a, but nevertheless, you know, think about this. There's so much that's made of differences, but our blood, regardless of who it comes from, can save a person. So George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Brianna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, and Ahmad Arbery of Brunswick, Georgia, along with countless other black and brown bodies before them, were created in the image of God with blood cursing through their veins that is compatible with ours or someone we know. So think about that. But I also want to ask you this question. What do you believe when you say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, that the eternal Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who out of nothing created heaven and earth and everything in them who still upholds and rules them by his eternal counsel and providence is my God and Father because of Christ his Son. In the beginning God created. That's the emphasis in this first chapter of Genesis and throughout the Bible God created the story of creation is not, first of all, about how, but about who. Just count how often God is mentioned. God created, God said, God called, God saw. The point is that it all came from God. The world did not create itself. The world did not create you. God created the world, and God created you and me and all people of the earth. Now, that may sound like a, a pretty remarkable statement to those of us who have always believed it, but think of it in the way that uh, G.K. Chesterton did in his delightful defense of Christianity entitled Orthodoxy. He says this, the essence of all pantheism, evolutionism, and modern cosmic religion is really in this proposition, that nature is our mother. And the main point of Christianity is this, that nature is not our mother. Nature is our sister. Because that's exactly what Genesis 1 says. The earth is not our mother. The earth is our sister. We did not come from nature. We are a part of nature. We both came from the same father. My father for Jesus' sake. And that's primarily what Genesis 1 is about. God created 
not have what I do. And why? Now you can talk about the why in two different ways. For example, there are two different ways to explain the boiling of water. You know, we can get on any scientific and say that, well, it happens because of the rapid uh, vibration of water molecules due to the application of heat. Ta da! You know, that's why water boils. Or you could just say it boils because someone wants a cup of tea. That's why it boils. The first speaks of physical process, the second of personal purpose. Genesis 1 and the rest of the Bible tells us why the world was created in, in that second sense, not so much the physical process as the personal purpose. God's purpose is hinted in verses 26 and 27, where God converses within God's self and then creates the human race in God's own image. The very pinnacle of God's creation was a creature who would be like God, someone whom God could relate as God relates to God in the mystery of the Trinity. Why did God create the world and us? Why are we here? For the love of God, for the sheer love of it, to express his love and to be loved back. For God so loved That's what said in John 3.16. We know that. Where John is explaining redemption. That same love explains creation. The God of love wanted a relationship with creatures like himself. That's why he created. Here's the clincher. Genesis 1 was written to counter other religious explanations of the world, the religion of the Babylonians from whose clutches Israel had just been delivered. And it is likely dated to the 6th century BC. When I found that out, I was so relieved because I always wondered why there weren't any dinosaurs. Right? Well, 6th century BC, there weren't any dinosaurs. So this was written to counter some of the origin beliefs of the Babylonians that the Israelites had to suffer with. Some of those ancient religions uh, taught that the world came into being because many gods fought or had sex or exerted themselves. And others said that there were two equal forces in the universe from which all things came, while still others said that things always had been. These ancient Near Eastern creation narratives were unapologetically polytheistic. There were many deities, and they even had changing roles and forms. Marduk was associated with water and vegetation and eventually magic, and it had a head of a pantheon. Azur was the leader of a rival pantheon in northern Mesopotamia. Uh, back to Egypt, a, a different set of gods quarreled over legitimacy with um, Osiris and Seth, and then Seth and Horus. And each of these major pantheons had hundreds of lesser deities contending for prominence and even survival. And these deities were fickle. According to the Babylonian myth, Enuma Elish, they created humans or at least some of them did. But at the same time, they later regretted the decision and schemed to destroy the human race because they were too noisy. These deities would battle, kill, and enslave and retaliate, uh, retaliate against each other, and humans were often caught in the midst of these disputes. So within this cultural narrative, the creation account of Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 4, A that we read, presents a completely different account of the world's origins. As Israel walked through the religiosity of a pluralistic world, their God revealed the truth about 
about creation in Genesis 1. In the beginning, God, your God, Yahweh God, created the world, not by struggling or fighting or by naming or collaborating with other humans, by simply speaking his word so powerful that all he had to do was speak, and it was so. And he created all of humanity in his own image. Now, I, I like to, um, every time I, I talk about this, I'm reminded about um, a, a teaching that I learned about, you know, quantum physics, well, quantum theology about everything in the universe is, is um, connected, but the, the one thing that they said was that the word to speak in, in uh, Hebrew is the bar, and that it could also mean to sing. And so the quantum you know, theory is that we all have these spirals of DNA that's vibrating all the time, and actually it makes music. And so that when God spoke, right, God sang us into being with that vibrating DNA. I sort of like that vision. But nevertheless, the Hebrew uh, word for Dabar means to speak and create, that your spoken word creates. And so God created when God spoke. But minimally, we can infer that humans were not created out of the capricious whim of certain deities. But rather, we stand as the pinnacle of creation event. After the creation of humans, God, in his powerful word, blesses them and declares them good. And the good news is that life in God's well-ordered world can be joyous and a, and a grateful response. Now, as well as creating vast cosmos, God also created the animal and vegetable life, a meaningful feat in, for an agrarian society like ancient Israel. In particular, the creation of the great sea monsters represent a revealed polemic championing the power of God. Because in Enuma Elish, the sea monster Tiamat gave birth to the first generation of deities and was later defeated by Marduk. But in Genesis 1, God has no struggle even with the sea monsters. I mean, that, that whole ancient story is, is hilarious. And you're like, what were they thinking? Because they're saying that the world was built upon the corpse then of the defeated deity. Well, as you consider the wondrous nature of creation, it's important to recognize the radical and remarkable and revolutionary nature of the Genesis creation in its original context because the Israelites were saying that there is one God, not many gods, and that the one God is God even over the many gods. This presentation of God comes as a wonderful relief and assurance to the family of ancient Israel. The God of Genesis 1 uh, provides assurance to those who work to raise crops against the numerous natural challenges. The God of Genesis 1 brings peace to the nation, struggling for survival against the numerous encroaching enemies from all sides. God is one. God is powerful, and God created us in his image. This opening passage of our Bible constitutes the essence of good news. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. Verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and everything crawling on the ground. I want to linger here a little bit. Male and female humans were made in God's own image. All kinds of humans 
tall, short, light skin, dark skin, curly hair, straight hair, and we can go on and on. God created humanity, humankind, without hierarchy. The image functions to mirror God to the world, to, to be God as God would be to the non-human, to be an extension of God's own dominion. That both male and female are so created means that the female images the divine as much as the male. Both are addressed in the command in verse 28. God gives humanity the responsibility to go and appropriate their own kind. It is a blessing. So how is it that we've come to this? The, the value of one human life over another. We were created to bring the world to its fullest creative potential. And yet, food insecurity has increased in the United States, especially during the pandemic. A Brookings report cites that at the end of April, more than one in five households were full food insecure. And two in five children um, with children two and with two in five children under twelve. A study by Dig Deep and the US War Alliance identified race as the strongest indicator that either than either geography or income for people to have access to running water. And Native American households are nearly 19 times more likely to lack running water in their houses. And this was cited by CBS News on May 9th, 2020. And then there's the stink of racism that permeates U.S. society and anywhere people of color have been colonized. Darkness, light, and new life are all aspects of our human experience. We are creatures of sunset and sunrise, of the ebb and flow of the tides of life, of darkness and light. Within our life stories and the stories of our human history, there are dark sides that do not go away. Human suffering does not go away. Also within our human stories are experiences of new life and fresh possibility brought forth by the light of Christ that shines across the ages and beyond the grave. The psalmist declared that the mercies of God are new every morning. We are renewed through prayer in which God faithfully interrupts and punctuates the past and initiates new beginnings. We are renewed through an obedient experience with the progressive will of God. God is powerful. And God created us in his own image. Let us pray. God of love and mercy, you have given us stewardship to care for this wonderful planet and to care for our neighbors. We have been blessed with a variety of gifts and talents and you call us to use them to help others. Open our hearts today to ministry to peace and justice. Embolden us to become part of this great cloud of witnesses who were unafraid to be your disciples. We think of so many in this church and in our lives who have gone before us, braving the difficulties presented by life. And we name them in our hearts before you, grateful for their examples. We also name in our hearts those people who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost and alone, those who
those who are part of cultures of oppression and indignity. We pray for families who have lost loved ones due to police violence. We pray for those police officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty. We pray for our nation that is in turmoil due to broken spirits. And we pray that healing would come out of our tragedy. Help us to be those people who by our example will break those chains of poverty and burst the doors that imprison their spirits. Be with this church that it may be a true witness to Jesus Christ in all that we do. Amen. I'd like us to respond to this word by a prayer of confession. It's my prayer. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, in perfection you created the earth, fixed the course of the sun and seasons, and populated the earth with plants, fish, birds, and animals to live in an intricate balanced web of life. You created us in your image and gave us the responsibility to care for the world. And we confess that we have failed to live up to our responsibility. Our lust for comfort and money has polluted the water with industrial waste, sewage, fertilizer, and pesticide runoff. We choke the air with gases that not only poison both plants and animals, but also change the Earth's climate at great peril. We have cut too many trees to sell lumber or build houses. We have drained too many fertile marshes and wetlands to create usable land. We have destroyed too many wildlife habitats in the name of progress. For these sins of commission and omission, we are heartily sorry. We pray your forgiveness and beg that you would create a right heart and mind within us, that we may consume according to our need instead of our want, and that we may begin to heal your creation from human injury. Amen and amen. Hear these words of assurance. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his own spirit. We are we are a part of creation's fulfillment. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I'd like to remind you that if you have prayer requests this week, please just send those in to the church office or call, uh, voice mail, and, and the U.S. mail is checked every day. So you can either send them in or call, and our prayer team will pray. And of course, they, they keep everything confidential. Um, also, I would like to mention that this Sunday is one of the six special offerings from the United Methodist Church. Uh, if you were here, you get this little envelope, um, Peace with Justice Sunday. Uh, so if you want to include an extra offering for Peace with Justice Sunday, just make a note uh, when you send in your check. Um, and Peace with Justice Sunday, like all the offerings we we, we send the check to the uh, West Ohio Conference um, for all the donations that come in from our church, and half of it stays within the West Ohio Conference, and half of it goes to the General Conference, which is worldwide. Um, Peace with Justice Sunday is, is money that ends up being distributed to peacemakers around the conference and around the world. Uh, some of the, the people who've been um, Given grants recently, uh, there's a group that work on keeping young people out of prison. Uh, there's a, another group that works on anti-racism uh, events. There's another group that works against human trafficking. Another group works against domestic violence. So any kind of situation where we're trying to be a peacekeepers of the world through the United Methodist Church is what this money would go to. That's called Peace with Justice Sunday. Right, if you do want to, you know, your normal getting to the church, uh, of course, a simple way to do it is just write a check and mail it to the church. Uh, we're counting and depositing that pretty much every week. Um, just send a check right to the church. And then also, you can go online and do it. Um, easytide.com. Uh, 
Cumulus.com slash C-U-M-C for Twelfth United Methodist Church. And you go to that site, that leads you through a very simple process where you can use a debit card or a credit card to make your donation. Uh, a one-time event or a recurring event, either one. And uh, we would like to take a moment here to thank our praise team tonight. And we've got Betty Bothwell and Robin Wilson and Dave Brewer, who have been here week after week providing our music for us. We would like to thank them. And we'll keep providing special music in just a moment here. Um, and thanksgiving for the fruit, fruitful abundance of God's creation. Let us give back a portion of what we have received.
prepared for communion. I'm just going to pray a prayer of communion to bless your elements so that you may partake of communion at home. So hear this prayer before we have the benediction. Holy God, pour out your spirit on us and the gifts of bread and cup. Make us united in devotion as you unite those first disciples. Raise our eyes to the skies above that we may recognize the risen Christ. And open our hearts that we may anticipate your presence and your spirit in our midst. In joyous gratitude we pray. Amen. As we prepare to go forth, I want to let you know that on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, you can meet with me on a Zoom meeting and we will be discussing the sermon. So if you have questions, um, if you have comments, if you have uh, uh, reviews to say about the sermon, you can join us. And so we will have that information available on our um, Facebook page and we will send it out in the email so that you can Join us for a Zoom meeting on Wednesday evening at 7 to discuss this Sunday sermon. So, as we prepare to depart from this worship experience, God has accomplished marvelous things. Let us go in a new appreciation for the work of God's hands. Let us work to restore the earth's perfect balance and beauty. Let us live as faithful disciples, telling all what God has done. And remember that Jesus is always with us to the end of the age. Amen and amen.